had a stroke. Um, I was thinking, he totally could have wrote He totally could have written that. Right? Like that could be Shantae's poem, right? <laughs> when I read this one in the stuff that he sent me, I was like, I actually want to go back in time and write this poem before he wrote it. Right? <laughs> Incidentally, uh, I actually was thrilled, right, at the idea that George Floyd is doing um, First poem that you did, I, I haven't seen that poem in a long time. Forget the fuck it. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no uh, I really, I was, I was actually glad to see you do that because I thought it'd be interesting to hear someone do it and, and see, you know, without you know, like the, the, you know, like the, the heaviness and bitterness right, that, I, that I bring. Right? <laughs> You know, like to even like a scripture written like in the bathroom, right? You know, <laughs> you know so I was, I was and, and also, incidentally, that was awesome. Right? But, uh, you made but it this sound body. <laughs> and uh, this poem is called Beyond Translation. There was no blue in ancient Greece. Homer's skies were iron and bronze, and they hung above a wide, dark sea. Likewise, chloros seems to be the word for green, but in the literature of the time, honey was chloros, dew was chloros, even tears and blood, leaving the impression that nothing was seen in terms of color, that cursory observations were secondary to intrinsic distinctions that marked the essence of existence. So the blood's red hue was less important than whether it was fresh as the morning dew, moist as honey tears, or still as an afternoon. Shantae.